I like ginger. First we... I don't smell a lot of ginger. There it is. The bloom on this one isn't quite as strong as it was on the black or the churro. And they say on their website that the coffees are good for a year. This one says March 9th, 2021. It's too fresh. That's why there's no bloom. It's like a little bit awkward because unless your mug is really tall, it's not gonna like drip all the way. It's not gonna empty itself. So you have to lift it out and hold it over your mug for the last bit of water to go through, which is kind of weird, I guess. The ginger's like, mm, it's not like super strong. It's got a lot of body to it. For some reason, it's a little bit more cloudy than just like the black or the churro. It kind of feels like bass music. Like you can't always tell that it's there, but if it wasn't, then something would be weird. I think it's positively affecting the flavor of the coffee. The ginger's not strong. I'm like a big ginger person, so I kind of wouldn't mind for it to be a little bit stronger, but I can see what they did here. It's kind of like, it's kind of lifting the coffee up and just making it a little bit more complex. So I think that the ginger would go really well with the coconut creamer. That's an assumption. Oh yeah. It comes out nice, that's good. Might have added too much. It's like really strong. It's good. So it's got cane sugar, coconut extract. That's the stuff I can taste. There's just a little bit of a weirdness to it. That's the ginger. Yeah, there's definitely not a ton of ginger in there, but you can taste it and it's nice. I like that. I don't, I don't hate this uh, vegan coconut creamer in small quantities. I think it adds to it. I would use it in the morning to drink coffee. It'd be a, a better way at work to, to have better quality coffee than bringing, you know, drip coffee that I make from home. There's a convenience to it and it's cute. I think it has more personality and it's probably a company I'd want to support more than right. espresso. It does smell a bit gingery. Well, it's black, but honestly, it's really not that bad. It smells like a tea, but it tastes like a coffee. So gloopy. Mm, no, it just tastes like creamer. Yeah, I don't really taste much of the ginger once it is a complete drink, the creamer. But it does taste good. The thing is, there is I don't know if it's something that I would use every day, because as much as my heart is a light by how freaking cute <laughs> the little coffee houses are, it just takes so long. And I don't know in what part of my day that I would like assemble the coffee together and like wait for the water, I don't know. I'm kind of seeing it, see it be really fun for like a party, sort of like assembling all the flavors out, being like, yeah, take what you want, blah, blah, blah. And then just like everyone taking their own particular flavor in a mug and making it all together and that kind of being fun. Um, I can see it being something in the office that you do when you're taking like a 15 minute break. It's kind of somewhere in between to go coffee and to making coffee. So we're making rose, which I'm super hyped about. I love it, I love it, I love it. This speaks to like when you're really young and you have like dress paper crowns. You get to like make little paper dolls. It's so, so silly, but I love it. Interesting smell. I wouldn't describe it as rose. I don't want to bloom like a real coffee person. There's just like something so delightful about the assembly of it. It fits right on the cup. It's so cute. It doesn't really have like the set it and forget it nature of more convenience coffee. It still is very much like a participatory experience. And again, I love coffee backpack. It's interesting. It's almost like halfway between a black tea and a coffee. Probably because of that more flowery flavor, I guess. The thing is, it's not adding a flavor complexity. Like, I don't really taste any. It's almost like it has cut the bitterness of coffee, but there's no, there's no extra flavor. It's almost like has subtracted the coffee flavor. It's interesting. It's, 
it does have a lot of similarities to like an herbal tea, but if it was a coffee, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Oh, okay. Well, that's pleasant. It's not like it's not like rich old lady just walked into your bar wearing tons of perfume robes. You know, it's not like would you like some face with your face cream? It's like it's light. It's it's not like in your face. It's just kind of uh, waving you hello from across the street. That worries me. I was like, I can only just smell it. Am I gonna be able to taste it? No, it's definitely there for me. You can see what Ashleen is saying about it being like a tea. It, that's, it, it's just like a tea. Like, it's not objectively rose. It's interacting with some of the, the coffiness and kind of, again, it's, it's subtractive. So we're kind of taking some of the rose and some of the coffee. They're kind of reacting with each other and kind of canceling each other out. We're kind of left with this, like, very subtle tea-like flavor. That's good. I like it more than the black, actually. It has my stamp of approval. Yeah, that's kind of drinkable. Is it good with condensed milk? Just a touch. It's like kind of still there. I think when you add any amount of, of creamer of condensed milk, the, the notes of the rose and the ginger kind of go away. The churro, um, I had it with oat milk this morning and it had a staying power to it. But when you consider the fact that the churro is simply just coffee and cinnamon and no other spices, then that's not so weird. It's not bad. It's not bad. I drink it again. I think I like it better black though. I can definitely smell the florality, if you will, more than uh, more than you can taste it. But I am I'm getting rose. It's good. It's very light. I think I like this one uh, a little bit more than the uh, the other one. When you add the milk to it, I definitely am I'm feeling like it's kind of like a black tea with milk. It's good. I'm doing the uh, the mint copper cow pour over. It smells like five gum. Very, very minty. This is my first pour over on the mintest occasion. This one reminds me of a tea too, but just the in the herbal sense. There's the mint. The flavor I think is the strongest in this one. It's like a like a spearmint. Reminds me of a loose leaf tea that I uh, get from Trader Joe's. That's a uh, lemon and spearmint. It's really good. Put some creamer in. This one's a lot like black tea as well, but I, I really like the, the mint. Yes, I would drink it again. It adds a little more of a ritual to the making coffee, you know, instead of just setting it to drip. It makes it a little more of an occasion. I like that. It, I mean, it certainly tastes good enough to use every morning. I like this a lot. I want to try all the other flavors. So that's, I don't know, that's pretty strong. Stronger than the ginger. Stronger than the rose. Let's see if that correlates to taste as well. It's definitely mint, but this feels oversteeped. It's got like this uh, kind of like tannins in tea. They have that kind of a uh, bitter effect. They kind of make your tongue just a little bit chalky, but it works well with their coffee. The mint does, at least. Mint and coffee, a lot of people don't know this, but they go really well together. I think this would make a great iced coffee, and I think I should try steeping it cold brew. It could use a little sweetness. Yeah, it's like a minty black tea that's actually coffee, but tastes like tea. That's the best one so far, by far. I don't know, I like the rose. I liked it black, but I like the mint with a little bit of that condensed milk. The churro was fine, worked well with oat milk. I guess that's just the ginger that's out. I think the, the mint followed by the rose are my top picks. It even smells really good. Yeah, it tastes like a coffee tea. As someone who does not enjoy the taste of black coffee, it is actually really good black. It's also like not overwhelmingly mint, which I know a lot of teas, they can just be like excessively spearminty. This is not really that the case. Yeah, I think this would be like a great cup of coffee to start the day with. <laughs> Part of me wants to be like a great cup of coffee you can have in the afternoon because it's kind of like, it's a, it's a very subtle wake up coffee. Mm -hmm. I'd actually be curious to know what kind of caffeine content is in here. That is super good.
and the mint flavor is still there. It's not like the condensed creamer has overwhelmed the flavor of the coffee, kind of like it did with the ginger, I would say. I could drink this all the time. It'd be a great like dessert coffee. I, it's really fun. It tastes really good. I would also agree that this one is the best one that I've had so far. It tastes great black. It tastes good with creamer. So as we're brewing these, I'm kind of getting like a sense for who exactly would use these, who would enjoy these. There are a lot of factors to consider here. If I'm somebody and I like coffee, I want to get into coffee, or I'm just someone that likes the, the atmosphere of a cafe, I like the feel of a coffee shop, and I kind of want to take that home with me. But I don't have like a ton of equipment. All I have is a kettle. But I still want to make some sort of morning ritual some sort of coffee routine. Uh, but yeah, most people already have a tea kettle, but the uh, these bags are pretty small, so I almost feel like you really do need a gooseneck for these. You don't need a grinder, the most expensive part of the deal. I don't need a brewer, I don't need filters. If I want to travel with these, I can. If I want to take them to work, I can. If I want to gift them to a friend, if I want to share them, I can. So yeah, um, and it's cute, you know, a little coffee house backpack you're saying, but it's, uh, yeah, that one's good, the mint, mint's very good. It's a mood, it's a mood. Okay, forgive me for the lighting, I'm working on it. So I wanted to make some final points, talk about whether or not I would ultimately recommend ordering Copper Cow. We'll start with the bed. Now, there were a couple things uh, with the ordering system and the website that didn't work well or didn't work smoothly. That's fine. This is a relatively new company. Um, and when you start a business, there are so many different things to work out. And as a first customer, it's kind of your job to help the company figure out all of these things. So if any of these things happen to you, get over it. Now, the bad for me was really just one thing, the sugar packets. When my order arrived, it was a mess. One of the seals on the condensed milk packets had failed and it had pretty much gone everywhere. Now, granted, one of their factories had closed in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, and this already relatively new company had to scramble even more to get all these orders out. So I was empathetic, but that's not it. On their website, they list one of their core tenants as being eco-friendly. And you can see that in most of their product line. The pour over kits are biodegradable. The packets that they come in are number five, polypropylene. Their shipping packaging is recyclable cardboard. But the sugar packets, the condensed, the sweetened condensed milk packets are not. You trash these, and I get it. This is pretty much the only way I can think of to package individual servings of milk in a to-go format. So there isn't really a more sustainable alternative. And the thing is, their sweetened condensed milk is the best I've had. I think they should offer it in a glass jar and maybe carry it in like two or three different sizes, depending upon the size of your monthly sub and you just take the whole jar with you, or you leave it at home. Now on to the good. The coffee is good, it's cute, it's playful, it's inventive. The condensed milk is really good. The packaging is well designed. The site is clean, it's pretty. The subscription dashboard is easy to navigate. The customer service exists, and it's really nice. Uh, so thank you, Lillian. And finally, the company is women-owned. And this is so important. Women need representation in the coffee industry, in all industries, really. And one of the easiest ways to help make that happen is to buy in to shop at women-owned companies, if you do nothing else. So ultimately, would I recommend Copper Cow to anyone else? Yes, I would. I think if you need an easy, stylish and accessible way to brew coffee, this is that way. So give it a try. Um, they have a number of different flavors available. I was a fan of the mint and the rose. Uh, I was curious about the rosemary. That one looks good, uh, but I haven't tried it yet. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button or just hit the like button. 
Uh, your support is appreciated. And uh, as always, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.